song from Grandview Christian School, and uh, we'll get to them a little bit later tonight. Uh, we do have a number of uh, announcements and, uh, and a few matters even of church business we'll cover tonight, but we'll cover those things quickly and uh, get to the special part of our service. Um, so a few announcements uh, for those of you who attend here regularly. Uh, coming up this week, some things to be aware of. Uh, this coming Saturday, we've got that active shooter training, so uh, be aware of that if you've signed up for that, not to be an active shooter, but to know what to do <laughs> in case of an active shooter. So um, we'll have that coming up on Saturday, so make sure you get that on your calendars. And then a number of open houses coming up, uh, so keep aware of those. We'll try to keep you informed. I know Nathan's <clears throat> is coming up this Saturday as well, so... Uh, Look forward to that, too. Uh, we've mentioned a couple of times prayer for Donna Hart. Uh, so Pastor Wayne Hart was a pastor here for a number of years. His wife Donna has uh, just been really struggling with some health issues. Pastor Hart sent me a letter today that I could read to you just as you continue to pray for them. So I'll go ahead and read that just to kind of update you on what's going on in the Hart's lives so you can pray for them better. To the precious saints at Maranatha... The boys and I want to thank you for your thoughts, prayers, support, encouragement, texts, calls, emails, and the general ways you have loved us. Donna remains in critical condition. God has asked us to walk through some dark valleys. We remember that our shepherd tells us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for God is with us. We want to give personal prayers and testimony to God for sustaining grace to our family and trust that it is felt also in our church family. So far, we've been unable to find any reason for Donna's deteriorating breathing condition. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is severely compromised, even though she works hard to breathe. Many of you have observed this in recent days. It has become so bad that I found Donna unresponsive on Tuesday morning. We had felt for some time that Donna simply needed to work at relaxing and better breathing techniques but it seems beyond that at this time. Something is seriously wrong and we don't know what. It appears to be something neuro or muscular which may not be able to be fixed. God has been teaching us to trust in him. We are not dependent on man for our strength or deliverance. It is not up to us to deliver Donna. Only the Lord has that capacity for he only is God. I am also reminded that I am only a temporary husband. In 2 Corinthians 11.2, Paul reminds us that Donna has been betrothed to Christ. Quotation, for I feel a divine jealousy for you since I betrothed you to one husband to present to you as a pure virgin to Christ. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2. He is her permanent husband. If Christ taps me on the shoulder and wants to cut in on my dance, I will gladly let him do that for two reasons. Number one, he is God after all. And number two, I know what it is like to dance with her. I'm just fervently praying that the Lord will let me dance a little longer in Christ, Pastor Hart. So please do continue to pray for them as uh, Donna goes through this hard time. And uh, as you have the chance, send them a note of encouragement. Uh, those of you who know them well and uh, have the opportunity to reach out to them, I believe there's a caring bridge. Uh, is that right, Janice? Uh, that you can find as well, probably through a Facebook link. So please be in prayer for them. We have another matter of uh, church business tonight. Uh, one of our watch care members would like to join for full membership. So these next few moments will be for our church members to vote on. Of course, all of you are welcome to listen in to his testimony, but I'll have Sam Malkasian come and share his testimony of salvation and baptism, and then uh, our church members can, can uh, vote on his membership. Thanks, Sam. Um, so I am currently a student at Faith Baptist Bible College. Um, but I want to transfer my membership here and then make this my home church, um, just as I plan on moving here. Um, so I grew up in a conservative home, um, believed I was saved, and then my parents had wanted me to go to a Bible college. At first, I was completely opposed to it. I didn't want to be in ministry at all, period, end of story. Uh, but I ended up still going to faith, and at the end of my freshman year, I uh, had been living in sin and just got into a lot of trouble there. And one of my friends, I ended up going to his room just kind of broken and not sure what to do next, and we just started talking. He raised the uh, statement. And was like, you know, Sam, I don't think you have a relationship with God. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't think so. I do. I don't think I do either. And so we ended up praying, and uh, about an hour or so later, um, just spending a lot of time praying, uh, made a profession of faith, 
and continue to live um, kind of how I did, not really changing anything. But I noticed at that point, God really started to put a lot of things in my life that really got my attention. Uh, and then, I guess about a year ago, um, a month ago, uh, I got baptized here because um, I realized that uh, my initial baptism didn't matter anything because I hadn't been saved at that time. And so for the past two years, um, I've really, like I've seen God putting a lot of circumstances in my life that's just been breaking me and drawing me closer to him. And then, uh, especially last year, I made the decision to go into full-time ministry and to give up everything I was pursuing before. And so this um, year here, I've been uh, pursuing a full-time ministry at Faith. And then even with my internship this summer in Cambodia, uh, which I am fully supported for, uh, so thank you guys for giving. Um, that's just one of those steps I hope to uh, take in pursuing full-time ministry and just completely surrendering, giving my life to serving God, uh, which is completely different than where I was even a year ago. Um, I, I wanted nothing to do with serving God. I was just completely bent on serving myself. Um, and then also just with that step of becoming a full member here, um, I, I see that as a step of obedience to God and getting plugged in and involved in my local church. Um, as you guys are the ones who support me uh, financially and through prayer. So thank you. Thanks, gang. All right, if you don't mind stepping out so we can take our top secret vote. <laughs> no peeking through the glass either, Sam. So. <laughs> All right, so for our members, we'd like to uh, recommend to you Sam Malkasian, uh, really just transitioning from watch care membership to full membership. Is there one of our members willing to make that motion? Okay, Nick Flynn first, and then Ron Williams seconds that. Uh, any questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. If somebody wants to get Sam and uh, let him know, we voted affirmatively. That would be a blessing. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that covers all of our unique business. Vis those visiting with us, thank you for uh, sitting through that uh, briefly with us tonight, but uh, just taking care of a number of church matters going on. We're glad to have the, the group from Grandview Christian School. We do want to give you the opportunity to worship together with us before we enter into worship as we listen with them as well. And so we'll sing a song together. I'll ask Nick Flynn to come, and he'll lead us in that song as we worship the Lord together tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to squat down just for a second. Blue Hymnals, hymn number seven, literally seven pages away from the very front. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Once you find it, everybody, go ahead and stand. We'll sing all three stanzas of Come, Thou Fount of Every Blessing, hymn seven in the Blue Hymnal. Come, thou fount of every blessing, to thy heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some glorious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bend my heart in heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Wonderful singing. You may be seated. All right, it's great to have with us Hope Song from Grandview Christian School. 
I'll ask their director, Jonathan Nihilus, to come and uh, introduce the group briefly, and uh, then they'll uh, get to enjoy worshiping together with them after that. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to as I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, Studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Good evening. Is everybody awake, alive? It's Mother's Day. Moms, did you get a nap? It's like the only thing that I did for my wife today. It's been kind of a long day for her. So I love you, sweetheart, since you're here. So lots of grace on you. Um, thanks so much for having us in. We are uh, Hope Song from Grandview Christian School uh, in Des Moines. Uh, we're in our fourth year of existence as Grandview Christian School, and uh, we've been very, very blessed. We've kind of blown up in the last several years. We had about 260 students when we first started, and we're going to be pushing about four, over 400 next year. And so we're, we're very um, thankful for what the Lord's been doing in our school and, and, and how he's been working and the opportunity to uh, teach and train students about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so we're thankful to be here with you tonight. This is, uh, like I said, Hope Song. They're a select group from our larger high school choir. And so these students get to get up early on Thursday mornings and spend extra time with me, which is a huge blessing for them. They thank the Lord frequently for that. Um, I know they're all smiling right now. Yeah, I thought so. So... Uh, our next song, I, I just want to give you a little bit of warning. Our next song is in Latin, and I don't want to scare you off at all about that. It's, it's okay for us to sing in Latin. God kind of understands the language because he created it. Um, so if you would like a translation, you can turn to Psalm chapter 33, and it says this. Sing for joy in the Lord, O you righteous ones. Praise is becoming to the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Sing praises to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a, a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. 
The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord.
Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Bruce, and I'm a senior here at a Grandview Christian, and I want to share with you guys, uh, before we sing this next song, a little bit about the lyrics um, with some of the songs that we've been singing and the song that we're about to sing, and I just want to share with you guys um, a biblical truth that's uh, in them, and that's super, and so powerful, um, and just has impacted me as we've sung these throughout uh, this year. And so in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, uh, verses 3, or verses 3 through 5, it says, For we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. And the reason I think this is such a powerful passage of Scripture is because Paul is saying that he understands the biblical truth that we have no confidence in this flesh. In all of his fears, in all of his trials, and his tribulations, in his imprisonment, he knew that his confidence wasn't in any way in his own strength. And that's where we get these lyrics like, his robes for mine, what cause have I for dread? And, and in this next song we're about to sing, it says, no condemnation now I dread, eternal hope is mine instead. And those lyrics are powerful because it's understanding that we as believers don't have to be confident in anything of ourselves because we know that when we do stuff in our own flesh, we fail. But we know that we have the hope and the confidence in Jesus Christ and his death on the cross that we don't have to be confident in ourselves because we have something so much greater to be confident in, something that's overcome the world. And so I want you guys to be encouraged with that message and understand that in these songs we're about to sing tonight, in the truth of the gospel, that we can put our hope in our confidence in Christ Jesus and not in our own strength. Jesus speaks for 
Thank you so much, Hope Song. Wasn't that a blessing? Can we just thank them for their ministry tonight? Really, that was, a, that was a treat. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your talents with us and, and really honoring the Lord and pointing our thoughts to Him, the words of those songs, especially that Latin one. Where, uh, <laughs> no, those, I love the words of Psalm 33, and so had those in my head too during that song, but uh, just uplifting, pointing to the work of Jesus Christ on the cross for us and uh, dovetailing nicely with really what we've talked about today, this morning, and, and uh, we will in just a little bit tonight, but... Really a blessing. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Um, we would like to give you the opportunity uh, to give to the Lord tonight and uh, to give specifically to their ministry, the ministry of Grandview Christian School. And so we will receive an offering. Uh, unmarked funds in this offering will be a love offering for Grandview Christian School. Uh, so for our regular attenders and members, if you are giving your tithe or whatever, mark it uh, that way so we know, but otherwise it would be a, a love offering for Grandview Christian School. We're so thankful that you guys are with us tonight and have ministered to us in this way. So I'll ask the ushers to go ahead and come at this time, and we'll have a word of prayer before we receive the offering. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We've listen to these precious truths about Jesus Christ, how he gave his life in our place that we might have hope and forgiveness and life and a relationship with you. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. And we, with gratitude, give back to you even now. We commit this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Olivia. That was great. Well, uh, we're glad that you've joined us tonight, and many of you are visiting with us tonight and weren't with us this morning, but often what we do on, on Sundays in the morning and evening is try to gather around the same theme. So this morning we were in the Gospel of Mark, and before you turn there, we won't be in the Gospel of Mark tonight, but just to bring all of you up to speed, we're working our way through the Gospel of Mark, and this morning we studied the account of the paralyzed man who was brought to Jesus by four of his friends. And you've probably heard the story before, but they come to the house where Jesus is preaching, and it's packed with people. In fact, not only is the house filled, but there are people outside in the front of the house, and as these men approach, they can't get in. But they want to bring their paralyzed friend to Jesus. So they climb up to the roof and find a way to get their friend down through the roof to be closer to Jesus there. And as the paralyzed man is put before Jesus, Jesus says something somewhat unexpected there. He says to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And all those watching, noticing the paralyzed man and knowing that Jesus can probably heal this man, wonder why would Jesus forgive his sins? And we recognize that Jesus was caring for the man's 
greatest need. In the room also were some scribes who saw this take place and they began to kind of murmur in their heads or even among themselves and, well, who is this man who thinks he can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus knows what they're thinking, so he turns to them and confronts their thinking and says to them, okay, which of these two things would be harder to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk. And the reality is that both would be impossible for a mere human to say effectively. And so then Jesus explains that he's going to heal this paralyzed man to demonstrate that he does have the authority to forgive sins. So he heals the paralyzed man. The man gets up and walks and leaves and is able to go. And the people are amazed and they glorify God and it all demonstrates that Jesus is God, and He's the one with authority to forgive our sins. Well, that was this morning. And it kind of begs the question as we think about that, well, why is it that Jesus would have any interest in forgiving sins? Is this some new, strange thing that only Jesus can do? And what means the scribes, even as skeptics, were talking among themselves, well, only God forgives sin. When and why does God forgive sin? And what makes our God a God who forgives sin? Well, it's actually a part of His character. In fact, it's really the way that God even defines Himself to us often in Scripture. One of those occasions comes to us in Psalm 103. So now you can open your Bibles to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And in the midst of this psalm, We have a beautiful description of God that brings praise to Him for who He is. And it begins, the the portion we're going to look at tonight begins in verse 8 with these words, which will be familiar to you. You can listen as I read them. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Those words are used in Scripture a number of times to describe our God, but really they're sourced in His own description of Himself. You may remember when Moses encounters God, and God then describes Himself to Moses. These are the words that He uses to describe Himself to Moses. And a number of times in Scripture, God describes Himself this way as a God that is merciful. That first word, merciful, is sometimes translated compassionate or to have pity on something. It's to be moved to action by love. God is merciful. The next word, gracious. We understand the word gracious. We use it often in our our talk and in our language and especially in church. God is one who bestows favor upon those who don't deserve it. God is good to us, though we deserve the very opposite. So his goodness, his, his, uh, his graciousness. He's slow to anger, his patience, and not just general patience, but specific patience with us, slowness to wrath. He doesn't punish us the way we deserve. Another sense of mercy. And then the last phrase, abounding in mercy, or some of your translations will say steadfast love. It's a, it's a rich word in the Old Testament. Some of you may have even heard the Hebrew word, has said, and it has this idea of of covenant love or promised love, one directional love that's not based on any love in return or any, any service in return. It's all based on God's choice and promise to bestow love. It's used frequently with the people of Israel, God's covenant people. God had promised many times to them to love them and care for them, and we see His faithfulness throughout the Old Testament. God has demonstrated that same promised love to us by sending His Son, Jesus, to die in our place. That's one directional love, promised love, sacrificial love. And so this is the description of God. He's a God who's merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in this steadfast love. But in the next few verses, the psalmist goes on to show some specific ways that God plays out these characteristics in action. Notice some of the things he does in verses 9 and following for his people, Israel. 
Verse 9, He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. Certainly, as you think through Israel's history and their relationship with God, there were plenty of occasions for God to strive with the people, to be angry with them, whether they turned to idolatry or whether they had just been redeemed from Egypt and built a calf and worshipped it instead of worshipping the true God. Or time and time again, we can think of examples. And yet, God says, I will not always or, or, or David says of God, he will not always strive with us. He will not keep his anger forever. What is that? That is forgiveness. That's what it is. It's forgiveness. It's a part of God's character. Then verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. There are quite a few times in Israel's history that God even says the words, okay, that's it. I'm ready to wipe the people out. <laughs> because they've done this, they deserve to be gone and Moses or someone else will step in and plead with God and say, no, you've promised your faithful love to them. And God says, yes, I have. I will spare them. And he's forgiving. He does not punish them the way they deserve to be punished. Verse 11, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. We picture the the heavens above the earth. We picture sometimes mountains are used to describe it as well, far above, just higher than we can imagine, extends beyond what we know. God's mercy to us, His steadfast love to us is great. Verse 12, And as far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Obviously, the distance between east and west being infinite. And as we looked at this morning, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ, that our God, omniscient of all things, can choose to be forgetful about our sin because they've been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven and removed as far as the east is from the west. Verses 13 and 14 really talk about His care as our Father and Creator. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear Him, for He knows our frame he remembers that we are, we are dust. All of these evidences of God's mercy and grace and steadfast love and being slow to anger. We see it in Israel's history throughout the Old Testament and we see it in our own lives. The great act of the New Testament being God sending His Son Jesus to die for sinners which on the one hand, we look at that and it surprises us because we say, well, we didn't deserve that. We, we, we rebelled against our Creator, the Holy God, the righteous God who reigns over all. We acted in opposition to Him. We deserve to be snuffed out, wiped off the face of the earth. Why would God ever act this way? And yet we look to who our God is and in a sense, then we recognize that his act of sending his son, his act of love and mercy and grace and compassion is not opposed to his character. It's actually who he is, who he has been all along. He's a God that is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he's demonstrated that love to each and every one of us by sending his son, Jesus Christ. Today, the theme has been forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is available to us through Jesus Christ, not because we deserve it, not because we've earned it, not because it was the, uh, the fair thing for God to do. Forgiveness is available to us because it testifies to the incredible perfection of God's character. It's who He is. He is a God who is gracious and merciful and abounding in steadfast love. So I don't know what your situation is tonight, but I share with you with great joy that our God is gracious and merciful and abounding in steadfast love. Have you received the forgiveness that He offers to you? you know, it really doesn't matter what is in your past, what you have done, where you have been, the things that are weighing on your shoulders tonight. But through Jesus Christ, God offers to you forgiveness. 
And it's a testimony to his amazing character. I wonder, would you receive his forgiveness by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight? And if you have, you can worship along with me and praise along with me the God who has given forgiveness, who has taken your sins and removed them as far as the east is from the west. And we've had a great chance tonight to worship together around these themes as we've sung praise to God for what he has done through Jesus Christ. It's a blessing. We serve a great God, a forgiving God, and it's not because we deserve it. It's because it's who he is. It's amazing. Well, we'd like to close our time together tonight by singing. We'll sing a final song. I'll ask Nick Flynn to come and lead us in that song. There is a higher throne. You'll see the screen coming down behind me, and the PowerPoint should be up there. And uh, we'll sing this together as we worship our God for who He is. He's the one who sits on the throne, and His perfect character reminds us of His steadfast love for us. Thanks. Let's go ahead and everybody stand as we sing our last song. There is a higher throne. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Why don't we close our time together in a word of prayer. Father, we praise you. We thank you for the God that you are, for demonstrating the perfections of your character by sending your Son to provide forgiveness consistent with who you are, a God who gives steadfast love. We praise you for it. We thank you for this sweet time of fellowship tonight, and we commit the evening to you in Christ's name. Amen. You are dismissed.